Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to try and cover all the basics for diatom filtration. I know in the past I have posted two builds for diatom filters, and in those videos I have gone over a great many of these details, but I still get tons of questions from people about every aspect of this style of filtration. I, mean, I know it's not common anymore, and you don't really see it much, uh, so what I'm going to try and do here is answer as many of those questions as possible so in the future when I get more questions I can just use this as a reference to here here go watch this it'll answer all your questions so let's get started on this now the reason why I use diatom filters is they are bar none the best small particle filter that there is they will filter down to a single cell that's a single eukaryotic cell which means it'll take out free-floating algae, and it will also take out uh, parasites like ick. And the nice thing about these filters is they will not filter out bacteria. So it will not filter out uh, your nitrifying bacteria, because one of them is free-swimming, and if it goes through a UV sterilizer, <laughs> the UV sterilizer doesn't care uh, what goes through it, it just kills everything. So it will not interfere with the nice chemical balance in your tank. It'll just take out uh, all the bits and pieces as like uh, free floating mulm and whatever else is that's making your water cloudy and it will not harm like I said the balance of your tank now if your aquarium is in balance in the sense that there's like rotting food and you have a bacteria bloom in your tank it is a good indicator that you have issues because it will not clear up your water it will only clear up uh, like I said eukaryotic cells so if you have um, like I said, a bad balance in your tank and you have a bunch of bacteria in there causing a, like a white cloud, uh, this will not take care of it and you definitely need to address that with another means, of course. So as you can see, it is very simple to get this started. Now, all of this is is a pump, uh, a chamber to have water mixing in it so that um, I can get the powder floating. And then I dump the powder in like this and there is a mesh over a porous pipe. That mesh is called crinoline. I'll leave it written here because people always ask me where they can get it. I buy it locally at a fabric shop. It's very easy to get a hold of and it is probably the simplest part of this filter. So what happens is that powder uh, goes through the pump and begins to coat that membrane. And as you saw, I dosed this twice. What happens sometimes is there might be a bit of a gap, so I'll put a little bit more in uh, to fill all the holes. And gradually, as this goes through multiple times, it coats that in a nice, even uh, film of uh, diatom powder. And once you have that nice, even coating, uh, it is now ready to start filtering your aquarium. So all you need to do is take the chamber that I have there out, because that's just in there to... Uh, get that powder stirring around and then of course put a sponge on it uh, just to keep your little fishies out and now it is actually going to filter the aquarium. So water will go through the sponge uh, into the pump and up into the chamber where the diatom powder is and that creates a positive pressure in there and that is what holds the powder onto the membrane. Don't unplug it unless of course you're done and you want to clean it because the second the power goes off all that powder will just fall right off and then of course it will end up being poured into your aquarium and it's not a, a big deal uh, but you'll have to reset the filter and of course use the diatom filter to filter out the diatom powder that you've now put in your aquarium uh, I've done it once or twice by accident uh, it's not really that big a deal like I said and uh, in time it will eventually you can clear it up anyway so barring that sort of thing the reason why diatom filters work the way they do is the powder. The powder is the skeletons of diatomaceous algae. They're a silicon-based uh, construct, and they have very, very tiny pores. And once it's coated like this, there's no real way for the water to get through it, except by going through those tiny pores. And like I said, it'll filter out everything. Now, this tank is not that dirty. So I had to stir it up a little bit to get some stuff in the water so you can actually see this working. And in no time at all, uh, I'm going to show you a clip in a few minutes that's five minutes into this. And you're going to see how much is already accumulated onto the, the membrane. And you'll see the water is actually quite a bit clearer. And the way I tell 
when to turn these off is the output for this. You can see it pouring in there now. And as it progresses here, you're going to see it slow down. And when it gets to the point where it is not really running that fast, then I know it's time to clean it. And if it's not completely cleaned out the aquarium, uh, it's time to recharge it. And if you have a particularly bad outbreak of algae or you have a much larger aquarium, it may take multiple charges of the filter to uh, get it under control. Uh, recently I had a 90 gallon aquarium where the timer had gone on it and uh, well, the light was on 24 hours a day and of course you got a nice algal bloom in there. And it took about a week and a half to deal with it, about five or six charges of the filter. I didn't obviously go in every day, so that's the reason why it took a little longer. I would go in in the evening, put the filter on, go in the morning, take it off, and then I would come back in a day or two and, and repeat the process until it was taken care of. And now it's perfectly fine. Of course, I also changed the timer, which really helps. And that's another thing I need to keep in mind as well. Uh, this version versus uh, using a UV sterilizer. A UV sterilizer will kill all of the uh, whatever the problem is, but all that nutrient will still be in your water. This case, all that is being filtered out as well because the plants are using that in their uh, tissues and you're filtering those out. So it does actually clean your water as well, as far as uh, uh, chemically as well as uh, physically. So this is five minutes in and you can see it's already beginning to uh, get covered. And this is now a half hour and it's getting quite covered and you can see now the flow of the water is also slowing down which is usually my indicator for this of when to uh, turn it off and as you can see now the water is a lot cleaner i am going to show you uh, two more iterations uh, there's going to be the final one which will be uh, i think two hours and i think the next one is about an hour mark i wasn't really timing these i was just coming by when i was finished doing a particular project and i had a look at it and as you see, it is getting quite dirty. And now we're getting to the point where it is much slower and the filter is very, very dirty. I really like diatom filters. I have stopped using UV sterilizers altogether. Uh, their one benefit, of course, is on ponds because there's just no way you can use a diatom filter unless you build a truly massive one and want to spend a lot of time, you know, dealing with filter changes and stuff. But as far as this goes, it's for aquariums, it's perfect, and it's definitely my uh, go-to. Now, hopefully, I have covered everything. Oh, and as far as building goes, you can just you know, refer to any of my build videos for this. They're very easy to put together. I didn't really do anything fancy for this one, and it is now my preferred uh, method for this because I can just set it in the aquarium here. And anyway, hopefully, like I said, I've covered everything. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.